Hey, everybody. So uh, I'm Chip Pausek, co-founder and CEO of 2U, and I'm here to give you some Van Halen inspiration. What do you think? Yeah. Let's hear it. There we go. So I thought about bringing my wig, you know, playing a little Panama with you, but I decided to, you know, keep, keep myself in my suit. I didn't want my general counsel to get upset with me up here. Um, so we are here to talk about the best of both worlds, channeling Van Halen to get the best of both worlds. So just an apology up front if you're a Van Halen purist. I happen to be one of the few people that actually likes both David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar. There's not many of them, and I happen to be one of them. Now, I prefer David Lee Roth a little bit more, but it wouldn't work with my whole best of both worlds because that was in 5150, which is a Sammy Hagar song. So we're gonna go with that theme. Uh, but I'm gonna level set first with you, give you a little uh, detail about 2U. And what I wanted to mention is tomorrow there's a talk that I give specifically on 2U that will get, get more into the weeds of our business. So we'd encourage you to, to attend to find out more about 2U. But, I co-founded the company eight years ago, and ultimately we power the world's best digital education. Now, we've started saying digital education more and more because online education really has a bad enough rap that we're trying to be distinctive from what has been a history of pretty low quality online education. When we started the company in 2008, we believed that you could create something great if you had the will of a great institution. If you had a school that was willing to make the students equal to the campus students, to effectively end the segregation of the online student, to require the same responsibilities and therefore give the student the same rights, to do this for real, with the real network, the real faculty of a great institution. And people thought we were a little crazy in the early days, and we had many stumbles along the way. Um, two U's done pretty well here over the last five years, and ultimately, I'm here to talk to you about the inspiration that came to me on one of my runs from listening to Van Halen, and I decided, you know what, David Lee Roth, Sammy Hagar, you are ed tech prophets, and I have to talk about it to this group. So um, to give you a little bit of detail about to you to have the perspective, so we did ring the bell on the, on the NASDAQ a little over three years ago. We just had our 13th beat and raise as a public company, and ultimately, it's been a great run, and I'm very proud to tell you that we have an incredible team of now 1,400 people strong, that are working with some of the best schools in the world to drive what we believe is the world's best digital education. Um, but it wasn't easy getting here. The story of 2U is honestly a story about institutional will more than it is a story about great technology or about a startup or great services or the investment that we make or the data analytics underneath the system. It's really a story of great schools being willing to unleash themselves from their physical boundaries and take what was a very profound risk back in 2008, 2009, and 2010 to offer really high quality online education in a way that people really hadn't done to date. Um, and I will always be incredibly thankful for our first couple of schools. And I'll talk about some of the lessons along the way that wouldn't it all be obvious. We actually think as a company, we've built a great company with good bones but we've done a pretty poor job actually talking about our company publicly. People don't really understand what is in this bundle of services that we provide a school. And so we're gonna try to bring more visibility to that over the next couple of years. But ultimately, it's about helping a great university make a digital transformation of something they've done really, really well for a really long time. And the one rule that sort of, the one number that rules them all is our retention rate. 2U is a company that does well by doing good. When students enroll in a program and then stay in a program and then ultimately graduate from a program, we do really well financially. So it's a pretty simple business. The student wins, then the university wins, and then 2U wins because we share tuition revenue over the life of a really long agreement. And students are winning. So 2U is about to pass 27,000 students inception to date. I happen to love this particular photo. That is a photo of an immersion at the UNCB school on campus. So you have over 500 online students descending onto Chapel Hill to spend four incredibly intense days together. And that's part of what this lesson learned is about, is every great education experience you've ever had in your life is about being part of something bigger, where you are part of something bigger. And people in these programs are definitively becoming Trojans, Tar Heels, and Hoyas not just a random master student. 
So we provide a comprehensive platform of technology and service. We invest heavily in each program. This is, a, this is, not, a, this is not a vendor relationship, it's a partner relationship. So to you will invest five to $10 million over the first four years of a program's life to drive a program to quality and scale simultaneously. And there's a layer of data analytics where we've gotten pretty strong here over the last three or four years in a way that we didn't have in the early days. And you'll hear me talk about that in a moment. Our approach, we like to call it no back rows. So everyone knows the back row. The seeds closest to an e the exits, a refuge for minds that wander home of the unraised hand. What if you could eliminate that back row and bring every student forward? That's the marketing copy. I said it many, many times on the road show, but it's true. The notion of not having a back row in the classroom is super powerful. It's 12 students looking at 12. So even though we passed the 26,000 student mark, it's done with an average class size of 12. Super intimate weekly live classes. And I would tell you on top of that, I actually believe that this is a metaphor more about life, honestly. Our universities have chosen to jump out of the back row and step forward. So the question is, is it working? As a business, we're proud to say that we just passed a billion and a half of tuition generated for our university partners, all built on really high quality student outcomes. So we do believe that we're building an education platform for the 21st century. But now I get to the fun part. Okay, so first of all, like, let me geek out for a second. Look at that photo. I mean, is that not spectacular? Come on. So raise your hand if you like Van Halen or if you're just putting up with me right now. All right, so I got, I got so, so I dragged some in. This is good. So uh, ultimately, what's interesting about 2U is the story of 2U, when I say institutional will, this is a very complicated thing that we're doing. And we didn't get it right to start. You're marrying two distinctly different cultures. Now, when I talk about culture, when I'm out on the road, particularly for investors, sometimes they don't actually understand how fundamental that is to the delivery of our business, truly every day. We are brand stewards of some of the best schools in the world and some of the oldest schools in the world. And what we're doing is marrying a fast moving innovative technology startup to an institution that by definition is one of the most important institutions in our entire culture. So we start with lesson number one of Van Halen. Can you give me a little volume? So tune in to what this place has got to offer because we may, may, may never be here again. So look at this slide. So our partners are listed on this slide, a handful of our partners and some of the best known companies or consumer products of the last hundred years. Like, look at the chart. Think about what we're dealing with here. You're talking about institutions that are incredibly rich in culture, in a network that matters. This is real. Google, an incredibly important company, one could argue the single best business model in human history, 1998. Yale has 75 years on America. You're talking about fundamentally some of the most important institutions that exist in our entire human history. That's not an overstatement. My youngest university partner is 12 years older than Walt Disney. Companies don't last this long. So how does that play into the mindset of marrying these two together? You have to be very careful, but if you can get it right, it can be pretty powerful. One more example, Coca-Cola. Some say it's the second best known English language word in the world, hello and then Coke. You can't tell me it's not one of the world's best brands. And ultimately, it is my opinion that brands are about relationships, not about marketing. Coke is, was founded in 1886. Two of my oldest university partners, they signed up as the second and third university partner with no data whatsoever. Georgetown and University of North Carolina Chapel Hill were founded in 1789. They have 100 years on Coca-Cola, 100 years. And more importantly, people don't go to Coke to get married at the Coke factory. People form relationships with universities that exist for literally the rest of their lives. It's pretty powerful. You might have heard that we made some news last week. We announced our first acquisition ever. It's an incredible South African company um, and we're thrilled to be able to partner long-term with Get Smarter to apply what is a remarkably similar business model to a very different category. So instead of online degrees, it's online high-quality short courses 
from some of literally the world's best institutions. Now those that know my repertoire a little bit, I get very excited that now I can add Cambridge to the, to the list. They were founded in 1209 by King Henry III, 683 years before Coca-Cola. So you're talking about fundamentally the most important institutions in the world. And so let me get a little personal for you. So this shot, if I talk about it too much, I might tear up. This shot is two weeks, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, I'm thrilled to tell you that I finally graduated from our MBA program. Uh, I've been, I had, was enrolled in our MBA program at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill for a really long time, four and a half years. And I finally graduated. And I can't tell you how powerful it is to go to graduation with your family and stand with your classmates and your faculty who have helped you achieve this moment. Any realization for me of the power of what we're doing for those 27,000 students where you're unleashing the university from its physical boundaries is very real. So lesson number one, don't forget when you're trying to continually disrupt the world what universities have to offer. They are the greatest institutions in our culture. So let's go to lesson number two. I'd like to see people start rocking out. So I think sometimes we do forget where we've come from. So that's a much older photo of me. Skinnier, a lot younger, in 1992, graduating from George Washington University. Why do I put this up? I don't put this up to tell my story. I put this up because every single one of you had this moment and came from a great institution where you achieved your goals. Now, what happened at mine? I met my wife. 26 years later, we're still happily married. GW completely opened my world. I'm a first-generation college graduate. I had never seen snow when I got to DC. Why? Incredible people, incredible students, an incredible network, and incredible faculty. So one of our great provosts talked to me about the faculty, and he said to me, you know, the story of change in higher ed is the story of the turtle being mugged by two snails. Somebody asked the turtle what happened, and he said, I don't know, it happened all so fast. And I love it, it's a little funny joke, but the reality is, it's true, change does not happen easily at the institutions we work with. But he also said this, and this is Stefan Krug at Simmons College, a very profound statement that he fundamentally believed that that fear was not a fear of change, it was a fear of loss identity loss. I've done something really well, a particular way, for a really long time. That is a really difficult adjustment to make. And so the question is, does technology rule the world alone? I don't believe the answer is yes. I believe people matter. That's why everything we do is people mediated. And the faculty matter tremendously. And one can complain about freedom of thought and the difficulty of tenure. But that's what makes these places magic. And so what we've found is when you really work with that faculty to sort of make the transition and give them the care associated with what a brand steward should be, we think it turns into a really powerful system. And I worry that entrepreneurs stay away from those sectors that have institutional inertia, like higher education or K-12, which is one of the reasons I think this conference is so important. So the second lesson. Let's remember where they come from. Change is hard. Fear of loss is real. And it doesn't matter. If you, if you educate them, they will come to see the power of technology and what it can do for their system. All right, how about number three? Lesson number three. This is where you should come up, people. Are you going to do it? Nobody? Maybe like three? There you go. Give me a little, there you go. So lesson number three. So we learned this the hard way. I think too often education technology companies show up at an institution and overpromise and underdeliver, and talk about how the technology will fundamentally transform every aspect of everything the school is doing and do it in, at light speed. That's not reality. So we had to learn the hard way. Our first couple of programs, we did overpromise. And then what we did is we built a tremendous data architecture over time to make sure we were getting it right. We built good bones. It was somewhat painful. 
We went through a period where we didn't launch any new programs. 2U launched four programs between 2008 and 2013. Then in 2013, we started scaling the business. Why? We had to deliver for the faculty. So my lesson as CEO in this particular case is play long ball. Be their partner, not a vendor. Think about their pain points and work with them to help them get past the hard stuff. And ultimately, it's worth it. Why is it worth it? Part of the reason, this is an incredibly sticky environment. So if you're an ed tech entrepreneur and you're going through the struggle that I went through in my first company, I ran my first company for a full decade and it failed after 10 years. So I've seen the other side of 2U. I love everything that's happening at 2U. But ultimately, it's a path that any entrepreneur knows is fraught with risk and challenges. It's really hard. That's been a meme for me lately. Startups are hard. Most don't work. By definition, less than 5%. But if you tackle a really big problem, this is a very defensible market territory. It's incredibly sticky. So Steve Case keynoted our partner summit a couple of years ago. And he talked about this proverb. I happen to love it. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I think it's incredibly apt for our partnerships. Uh, it's a, it really is a remarkable group of people that come together to try to transform themselves. And if you're patient, it's well worth it to the entrepreneur. So try to reimagine it together. Uh, right here, we've got um, David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar. Uh, it looks to me like Sammy's doing a little bit better. Uh, the idea of pairing the institution with the technology startup is hard. So I would argue to you it's all about keeping your promises. Play that long ball, and together you can have the best of both worlds. So I've got a little bit of a final lesson, and this is really directed to the universities. Nothing better like now. Catch a magic moment. Do it right now. Whether you do it with two of you or not. And I'd like to talk about our first university partner. That's Tommy Trojan looking up at the stars. University of Southern California embraced this idea before anybody thought they should and stuck with us through some of these pain points that I mentioned. And today, the University of Southern California School of Social Work, as one example, is producing 5% of the United States social workers. By jumping right now, they have helped fundamentally transform that university. The amount of digital activity across USC is profound. One of the things I've been saying lately is I feel like the internet, the uh, online education is in its third wave. The first wave was the for-profits. And they don't get enough credit for breaking that boundary and really taking the online environment seriously. The second wave was about the massive open online courses. I would argue that that was more of a toe in the water than it was a profound statement about the future of those schools. And I believe today what you are seeing is the sleeping giants aren't awakening, they're awake. They're robust and they're growing and it's because ultimately they have made a decision to embrace it right now. So digital education is evolving so quickly that it is my opinion that you have to think about how to jump on board and take the risk. The question you have to ask yourself is in graduate education, why should you pick up your life, quit your job, and move to attend a great grad school if you can get everything from that school as a student that you want and not sacrifice quality? You get the same degree. You have many of the same faculty. You have the same network. You have the same rights and same responsibilities. Investors often ask me, of the 80 billion of graduate education, what portion is addressable? My argument, all of it. That's like act, ask, asking Tesla what percent of the car market is addressable. It is my opinion that all of graduate education will go this way over time. Why? The value proposition is just too strong. So I've got four lessons for you here. First. Don't forget what universities have to offer. Remember, their culture requires freedom of thought. And that change that they have to go through is very difficult. Play long ball, because it's really worth it. And ultimately, digital education is evolving rapidly. So what does that mean? You got to jump. 
I thought that would get a little bit too high. Right? Oh, I, got, I got a little head bob in there. So those are the lessons. I hope you enjoyed my Van Halen talk. Um, I could sit here and wax poetic about, you know, what, what's better, Ice Cream Man or Jamie's Crying, but I won't do that to you. So we have four minutes left, and I was told I could open it up to questions from the audience. I'll answer anything. Even about Van Halen. So I think ultimately the, the combination of clinical placements where you've got students going in and dealing with a placement in midwifery or we just announced a doctor of physical therapy, uh, the combination of that with the weekly live classes with just high quality asynchronous learning, I mean the asynchronous learning is high quality, about half your coursework time is done asynchronously and then about half is done live. And it's tough to beat those live sessions. You know, I did live, I did live classes myself from Dubai. Uh, Dublin, Hong Kong, South Africa. Uh, you have to make time for those live classes. It requires you, and the schools have to decide, do they take attendance to the grade? And every one of our schools has decided that that's a resounding yes, because they don't have a mechanism to do it on campus. Um, so it really is about engaging with really high quality faculty and other students. If you don't come prepared, there is no back row for sure. Everyone knows that you didn't do the work that week. I'm sorry, say that. Look. I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. How do you conduct assessments? A uh, variety of different ways. Uh, so um, in my particular degree, and most graduate exams are open book by definition. So uh, we live proctor three-hour exams, super intense, uh, where, you know, I'm being stared at by the camera. And, uh, you know, you are dealing with long-form answers, uh, whether it be in courses like accounting or econ. Uh, or then courses like public speaking, where by definition you are live in the environment doing your final exam or your final presentation. Um, and then there's a bunch of quizzes, I mean, more standard sort of assessment vehicles. Uh, but I think at the graduate school level, uh, easier to, uh, all the exams tend to be open book because of the type of material that you're presenting. How do I think of the trade-off between reach? You know, our job is to find the right student, not just any student. And our job for our university partners is to scale these programs up as large as we can at their quality level with their admissions decisions without sacrificing anything. And that has to include, by definition, a large number of additional faculty being hired. Uh, so we recently added faculty recruiting to our bundle of services just to help the schools increase the number of faculty they have, because you do have to scale up the faculty if you're going to have that many live sessions. So on a 2U partnership, typically, uh, if I had 10 of our deans sitting here, on a 2U partnership, the reason the whole thing works is even though that we're sharing more than half the tuition revenue, ultimately the, the school has many really important things, but one expensive thing, which is hiring the faculty we tend to have the more expensive side of the ledger. So on a 2 u back program, they can often do better than they would on a campus program. And you would hear that from my partners if you asked them. So Get Smarter actually, interestingly, I mean, they work with Cambridge, Harvard X, MIT, University of Cape Town, University of Chicago, and this week they'll announce a new university partner. Uh, it's a strikingly similar model. Uh, short courses instead of long courses, as you would call degrees in Europe. So it's like taking a piece of one of our degrees and offering it as a distinctly separate course. Um, different form of people mediated. So there's a tutor that works with individual students, but they ended up with a 88% course completion rate on average, which I think is incredible and had a lot to do with why we wanted to acquire the company. I think we're down to zero, correct? Okay, I'm done, folks. <laughs>